Hey everybody, today I talked to Henrika Meyer from Rethinking Economics Rotterdam. We talked about the video projects she is involved in of economic schools of thought on climate change and about the many lessons that she learned during this project. Moreover, we discuss possible changes in teaching economics and what value means when it comes to economics. To share a great quote beforehand, economics is about the society we want to build. Hey Henrika, thank you so much for joining me. Um, how are you? Yeah, first of all, thanks for inviting me, actually. <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm very good. So I'm just, yeah, just about, like, about to finish my master and about to finish my time in Rotterdam. I was doing my master here. So, yeah, that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> cool. Which master do you do? Um, uh, policy economics. So, yeah, that's basically a one year is economics master, which is a lot related to policy making and fiscal policy and... Um, topics like that. <laughs> so did you write a thesis on it? Uh, what did you write a thesis on? Yeah, no, actually I still have to write my thesis. So I'm going to write it at um, an institute which is working on, um, well, on climate economics in Berlin. So it's, it's called the Potsdam Institute für Klimafolgenforschung. So yeah, they're working on, um, yeah, basically like it's sort of um, climate scientists and they also have um, an economics department and that's where I'm going to write my thesis. So I kind of postponed it to be able to stay in Rotterdam until now and then uh, work with them afterwards. Do you know on like what specific kind of topics you'll be working or? Yeah. Um, yes, actually I'm going to, um, to write on the carbon tax. So it's going to be within the framework of optimal tax theory. And yeah, the question is, is about effects of the carbon tax on the labor market, but it's still very, very rough. So I haven't started. So I don't know what exactly I'm going to, um, to do, but that's, yeah, that's what I'm supposed to, um, to work on. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So did you uh, do your master in the Netherlands and before that you were studying in Germany or did you also yeah. do your bachelor's here? Yeah. Uh, um, well, actually, I did philosophy and economics in, in Germany, in Bayreuth, that's a small town in Bavaria. And yeah, and then I did different things for two years. And now I came to Rotterdam to do my master's here. Why, why here? Why did you go from Germany to Rotterdam? Yeah, yeah. well, actually, I, um, I was pretty sure that I wanted to study in the Netherlands at some point, because I feel like uh, universities in the Netherlands pay a lot more attention to teaching and to didactics and stuff like that and also in many respects I think economics in particular is more applied than it tends to be at German universities so I felt like I really wanted to have a different style of learning also different yeah different type of exams it was a lot of learning by heart <laughs> during my bachelor's and I feared that it would be the same um, in the master and I think that well, I, I had the hope that it would be a bit different here and actually I, I, I think it really turned out well. So um, yeah, so I was quite happy with my master in that respect. And then once I decided to come to the Netherlands, I guess Rotterdam was just, um, yeah, I don't know, it was several reasons. I mean, like Rotterdam, like the university is known for economics and also Rotterdam is a nice city and there is this policy economics master, which is really like the topic that I'm most interested in. So um, yeah, so then, I don't know, it was, I, that was, I decided that quite quickly. <laughs> yeah. So how did you get into economics even before you went to university? Like, why did you yeah. do a bachelor in economics? Mm -hmm. um, well, I think that I had the impression that a lot of topics that I'm interested in were related to economics. Above all, back then it was more inequality. Now I kind of stood then then for, for some time I was very interested in like labor economics and taxes and issues like that and um, and now it's switched more to the climate issue like in the last maybe two or three years but um, yeah but I just felt that it was a lot of very important topics and also I think that economics is a very influential discipline when it comes to politics so I felt like I wanted to understand what was going on there um, and also, like, I mean, I started off with philosophy and economics at that point. I wasn't that sure whether I really wanted to do economics, but I liked that combination. And yeah, and then I realized, okay, I want to, I want to get on with this. 
So. Cool. So, so why did it change? Why did policy, your fascination with policy change from more labor yeah. economics to more climate? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, I think that all those topics are very related to each other, right? I mean, it seems, it seems like very different topics, but then you realize, okay, uh, even when talking about climate, there's a lot, of, a lot of things related to inequality, which play a big role. But um, I think the reason is that I just started to realize how urgent this climate, um, these climate issues are. And then I felt like right now, it, to me, it seems like the most important topic. And that's not to say that other, po other topics are not important, not at all, but I just realized like this is very urgent and I want to um, understand this better. And so that's why why I started to, to think more about it. And inequality is still a very important topic to me, but I think that if we want to, to solve certain topics, like certain things when it comes to inequality, like the climate issue is always going to come in. And yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the thing that's going to really bring a lot of inequality soon. So yeah, so it just seems very relevant. Ah, so what do you mean by that? Why is the climate change mm -hmm. going to cause more inequality? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, because different groups across the globe and across and also within society are affected in different ways. So, um, yeah, I mean, right now it looks like those groups which are going to be most affected are those groups which are already kind of in a vulnerable position now. So that means that once they are affected more and more, obviously these inequalities are going to to become bigger and and also, for example, people in richer countries obviously have a lot more means to protect themselves and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. And, and, and I mean, it comes in everywhere. Also, also then, for example, when it comes to the carbon tax, I mean, there's always issues about distribution of resources. That's what, what it's about in the end. I mean, we have to distribute resources in a way that, um, yeah, that doesn't kind of accelerate the climate crisis and at the same time is, I guess, can be defended from a justice point of view. So I think that's... Okay. Yeah. So, but how did you learn then about the urgency of the climate crisis? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I don't know. I don't think there was like this one moment where I started to realize that it's like that. It was more um, like I always had the impression that climate is a very important thing, but that, but, but for a long time I thought that, well, I mean, you can't work on everything. So I felt like I was just giving priority to, to something else. And then like little by little, I think I started to realize that, um, yeah, that it was just very important. And I, I guess it's, it really started at the beginning of 2018, probably with Fridays for Future in Germany. I mean, I think it wasn't that big, maybe in the Netherlands, but, um, yeah, in Germany, it just like at the beginning of 2018, there were all these, you know, pr protests of um, of kids, basically. And and during that time, I also started to read more about it and get involved more. And we started a campaign from the um, from the like German rethinking economics, which is the Netzwerk für Rale Ökonomik, which is was called Economists for Future. And I mean, it's kind of, it's become a bit detached from net sectoral economic now, but, but back then we kind of started that and then I started to read more about it. And that's when, when it started, I guess. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay. So then how did you, um, moving from like being fascinated by climate change and economics and then moving to Rotterdam, how did you get into rethinking Rotterdam? Yeah. Um, I was very active with um, the Netzwerk Plural Economic for a long time. So actually, I, like when I started my bachelor, I jo joined the local, gr local group in Bayreuth at my old university. And um, I had like my faces, like sometimes I was more involved, sometimes I wasn't that involved, but I was like there. And then, I st and then at one point I started to work for them. They have like some kind of yeah, how do you call it, like jobs for students where you, where you work like 10 hours a week. And I did press work for, for two years um, for the Net Sectoral Economic. And there I also worked a lot, yeah, on topics related to rethinking economics. And when I came to Rotterdam, it was 
quite clear to me that I wanted to have that parallelity to studying because there are always topics or ways of approaching economics, which I never really liked. And I always had the feeling that I needed this, yeah, this kind of work to, to deal with that, I guess, <laughs> in a way. So, um, so yeah, basically I contacted Clara, who was very active with rethink, or who was trying to set up um, something or setting up something in, in Rotterdam, a local group. And yeah, from, and, and she's super enthusiastic. So from there, <laughs> uh, it was very clear that we would try to do something in Rotterdam. So what were you, um, what did you do at Rethinking Rotterdam? What kind of projects? Mm -hmm. um, well, what I'm most, yeah, mostly responsible for, or what I was mostly responsible for the entire year now is a video project we're doing. Um, so we, yeah, we basically had the idea, or we thought that, I mean, within rethinking, well, re yeah, rethinking economics, obviously, like pluralism is a very important topic and like including different schools of thoughts into economic thinking, into teaching and all of that. And um, I always had the impression that it was very in the abstract, like talking about different schools of thoughts and, and how they work and everything. And I felt that it would be very nice to actually apply all these school of thoughts to a particular problem and see how they maybe address things differently, how they ask different questions, how they come to different results, how they explain things differently, all of that. And, um, and then the idea was to kind of apply all those different schools of thoughts to the topic of, of the climate crisis and see, okay, what is their take on it, basically? Um, and, and yeah, and what we ended up doing is to have like a, if we, um, like a series of short videos, like seven videos, which are all around yeah, six to seven minutes. And the question is always, what, what is a particular school of thought about? For example, what is, I don't know, ecological economics about? What is feminist economics about? Also, what is neoclassic economics about? So that's always the first question. And then the second question is, how, like, to what extent can the school contribute something to the debate on the climate crisis? And, um, and what are policy recommendations? And there you see that policy recommendations are very different, like that they differ a lot and that actually those different schools of thoughts don't necessarily, yeah, I don't know, contradict each other, but rather that it would be very useful to have them one next to each other and use all the measures which are proposed by these different schools. Um, so, yeah, and, and that's, that's what, what I'm working a lot on right now. <laughs> so, oh, so how was it to do something like that? Um, well, I mean, I think it was challenging. It was, we, we, we got a very good funding from, from, um, from the university. So that was, we have a, um, yeah, it's in, in Rotterdam, it's called, called Community for Learning and Innovation. They, um, they have like get money and have like a kind of, a fund to um, to finance basically students projects and we applied for funding there and um, and that worked out so once we realized that we had the means to do this video project we started to think about ideas of how to do it and um, and the, at the beginning, the idea was to just interview different experts from the field, asking them questions about their school, like the school of thought they're working on and how that relates to the climate crisis. Um, and at the beginning, it was actually planned as maybe a smaller project. They're just asking people, cutting things together. And then at least I pictured it, it, it like that, like cutting everything together and then everything would be done. <laughs> And then it turned out that it wasn't that easy because then basically Corona kind of hit in and we realized that well, we can't do interviews. At, and at one point we were all, almost about to say, okay, we're not doing the project because it's just seemed tough to come up with something else. And then we decided to do interviews via Zoom and, but as it's really videos and not podcasts and really short clips, the pictures were kind of important, like an important part of it and the quality of the pictures was very bad. So then um, we switched plans again <laughs> and decided to, um, to just give explanations ourselves, film ourselves, and then basically have illustrations of the, the experts explaining things and, um, and just using their voices of how they give answers. Um, so once we decided to that it became a much more complicated project because we had to write scripts 
of the explanations and we yeah and we had to animate a lot more stuff so we have we have illustrations and they're animated to yeah basically underline what is explained and what what the people say um and yeah and i think all those transitions were kind of challenging and also we don't have anyone in the team who has done some a project like this before so it was a lot learning by doing and also realizing that sometimes it's hard if you don't have experience with things so next time <laughs> i would probably <laughs> um yeah make sure that there are people with experience before but it's also super interesting i mean you also learn a lot doing this kind of things so that's nice <laughs> That's pretty cool. So what is one of the the big things that you learned that yeah. you really mm -hmm. want to share? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think I content wise, I learned a lot. That's not so much about the process, but that's more um, that I've really realized that in every school of thought, there are just so um, good approaches and so useful approaches and also that it's really done in a very scientific way and all of like that there's a lot of very like kind of work that is um is done according to very high science, scientific standards and i feel like sometimes there's this prejudice that um i don't know mainstream economics is the only part of economics where real science is done and like in in many respects in terms of just standards and in terms of modeling and in terms of using maths and all, all i mean there that's not the only way to do science, but um, but it's sometimes seen as that. And yeah, and I think that in all those schools of thoughts, these methods are used and also other methods. And I think it's just something, yeah, I wasn't immune to like, I also had my prejudice, even, even though I've been involved with rethinking for a long time. And now this video project really forced me to go a bit deeper into, into the work that it's done. And I think it's really a lot of good work. And I think it's, I'm just even more convinced than I was before that it should really, that people should make, like economists should make use of all that work. Um, so I think that's something I've really learned content wise. And then when it comes to the process, um, I tend to think that things will work out. Like I ha always have this approach to, think, to things of thinking like, yeah, I mean, somehow it's going to work. <laughs> and I think that's in a way it's, it's nice because you start projects probably when starting a big project like this video project, I would be a bit more careful with thinking that everything is going to work out somehow. So I would maybe make sure that, that, that everything is in place a bit more carefully beforehand. Um, and yeah. And also I think I would try to talk to people who have done similar projects before at an earlier point in time. So, if I did another project, I mean, now I've done a video project and I know people working on these kind of things, but if I, um, if I did something else, I don't know, if I was to organize a conference, I would probably, before even starting to draft a concept, I would really talk to some people who have done something like that and who can give you hints of what can go wrong and who also can tell you what kind of resources you need, what kind of knowledge do you need, and then you can check all of that beforehand. Um, so, yeah. That stuff that I learned and, and, and then also when it comes to the videos itself, obviously, I mean, writing a script for a video is obviously something totally different from writing a scientific text. So it's something which is really, I mean, people, I mean, this is a job. So people really, I mean, there are people who know how to do this, who have learned how to do this, this and it's not just like you sit down and then you write a page and then, and then it's all easy, but you really have to approach it differently. You have to take, you have to take into account, into account very different things and that's something where I learned some things, but I also feel that it's something which really requires a lot of work. Like if you want to produce videos, there is a lot, lot of knowledge, like, and, and, and if you want them to be good, there is a lot of, of knowledge you need and of experience you need for it to really turn out well. <laughs> so is there a specific skill that you learn because of the project? Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I guess where I felt that I like when it comes to very practical things, I think that the script writing did in a way get better, or at least I, I learned a little bit better what I have to pay attention to, but that's obviously a very specific thing. I mean, I don't know whether I will make use of that ever again, <laughs> who knows? Um, but 
but there, they are, there are some interesting things. For example, when you go to university and you write a lot of scientific texts, then obviously structure, for example, is extremely important. Um, now, when it comes to videos and you do a six, seven minute clips, structure is important, but if you structure it in the way in which you structure a scientific text, people are just not going to realize that there is a structure because you just follow spoken words differently. So there is not a first, second, third, like you can't make this kind of, yeah, bullet this paragraph like one after the other where you feel like everything is in parallel because people are just not going to realize it. like when you have something spoken, it's much more important that you just, that everything you say is an interesting point and that you don't make too many points at the same time and things like that. <laughs> and when I send people those scripts and ask them to correct it and, and people haven't done something like writing scripts, they tend to, to add a lot of stuff and, mm. and, it's, and, and then you realize, yeah, that's what you would do for a text. But then if you try to explain something by words, you just need to, to, to phrase it in very simple ways. And I, I was very surprised to realize that what we say apparently is so much more like easy in terms of structure of sentences and stuff like that than um, yeah, written words. And also, I mean, I don't know what you pronounce. For example, when you speak, you can pronounce things. So then you can make things, you can make things like put emphasis on things you can't emphasize on texts. That changes the entire structure of what you, what you can do and what you can't do. And um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's like all these tiny things you come to realize little by little. Um, that's pretty yeah. cool though. So before you said that you had some prejudices because well, that's mm -hmm. what you're, you, you get some prejudices, I guess, even taught. So yeah. how was, do you have an example of one prejudice being yeah. like dismantled? Yes. Um, well, for example, when it comes to some school, I mean, the, 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 I would say the, a very common critique of an organization like the Thinking Economics um, is to say, yeah, those students, you know, don't want to do maths and they just want to talk the entire day and, and you know, criticize everything they see. Um, and, and I always had the impression that that critique wasn't very valid and that, that it wasn't, yeah, that it wasn't true that people from Rethinking wanted that. But at the same time, I did ha have the impression that in some schools of thoughts, mathematical methods are just not used that much or that modeling doesn't take place. And for example, I, I wasn't aware of the fact that, for example, yeah, the examples I gave before, ecologic economics or feminist economics, that they actually use quite a lot of econometric techniques that they have their own models, which are set up differently, but which are still models. Um, I just wasn't aware of the fact that there is so much work um, done in that way. I think that that was probably one of the most, yeah, the most important insights. And, and maybe also that a lot of criticism that students are bringing up now in the context of rethinking economics is criticism that's been coming up within, let's say, the heterodox part of economics for a very long time. So if you read all the papers, they, they basically criticize mainstream economics in exactly the same way as we think economics does. And um, that also surprised me that there is really the scientific community bringing exactly the same points and not only like a student's organization. Um, yeah, that, that's not prejudice towards those school of thoughts, but that's also something I just, um, yeah, I came to realize when, when reading more, more papers. Um, and also maybe I wasn't aware of how open like all these different schools of thoughts are to each other. So I feel like from like within, um, within current teaching at universities, which is a lot of neoclassical economics, I feel like there is a lot of, um, yeah, I would say prejudice against other schools of thought, or at least the, like the work that is done is not taken very seriously. But then I think that within the other school of thoughts, there is a lot of overlap, like that people, for example, that, I don't know, post Keynesian ideas are put into, um, into agent-based models from complexity economics, or that ecologic economists say that the ideas from feminist economists are very important to include, or all that stuff. And, and, and they always emphasize that other schools of thoughts are important. 
so it's not like every community is doing their own work, but they are aware that there's a lot of stuff going on, many, many of them, like obviously not everyone. And that's also something I, I really, yeah, that surprised me in a way. And I, I was really happy to, to realize that. <laughs> that's really cool. So yeah. is the project coming out? When are you launching? Yeah, um, it's, it's not yet entirely clear. So we're, um, we're doing seven videos in total and four are ready now and it's planned to, um, to finish all of them until end of August, September. Yeah, so latest, latest end of September. That's cool, <laughs> that's okay. Yes. So when they're up, where can we find them? How can yes. we? Um, I mean, there are going to be different sites. It's, it's going to, we're going to, it's actually going to be used hopefully for teaching at our university and obviously at other universities if there's interest. And then we're going to share it on, on social media via rethinking and maybe what's the best place to actually find it is, is the platform exploring economics. Um, where, yeah, I don't know whether you know that. So that's exploring economics. It's just a, it's a platform where, um, yeah, where they gather a lot of material like videos and texts and, and stuff from different economic schools of thoughts. And the videos are also going to be up there. So um, how long have you been with Rethinking now? One year or? Um, yes, with Rethinking, with Rethinking Rotterdam, one year. Yeah. So what is your favorite Rethinking story? Oh, my favorite Rethinking story. Um, you mean in the sense of what happened or? You can pick anything. Oh, wow. A Rethinking story. Let me think. Um, I don't really know whether I have a favorite rethinking story. I mean, I think what, I mean, something that, that, that I realized now is that probably that's, that's not really a story, but what, what I came to realize in Rotterdam is that um, I think there is a lot of bias towards rethinking economics in a way because people perceive it as very political and, um, and very, yeah, I don't know, very criticizing a lot maybe. Um, and I think what I've really liked in, in Rotterdam now is that we worked, like when we applied for funding, we worked together with people from a lot of other disciplines because this community for learning and innovation is not necessarily economists. And, um, and there all of a sudden I got like a totally different perspective on, on, on rethinking from, from those people. I felt like we had to, first I felt like we really had to, defend these ideas that we um, wanted to do these projects because that's what I was used to at my old university. And, um, but then in the team where people took these decisions, there were a lot of non-economists and to them, all of this seemed like very, very kind of plausible and very, um, yeah, and, and important in a way to say, yeah, obviously we need different theoretical schools and we need maybe a different way of teaching and all of that seemed very natural. So that was really maybe not a rethinking story, but a very nice rethinking experience that I felt like, okay, interesting. I mean, within economics, it's sometimes not that easy, but outside of economics, um, everyone seems to agree that this is very important and this is very legitimate also to say, okay, I want to, to be critical and I want to think about this from different perspectives. And, um, maybe I had the impression before that there was this divide depending on where you go, but um, it just reinforced that feeling that really, yeah, maybe sometimes it's just good to go, like move outside of the realm of economics and talk to other people. And then you get a different perspective on the entire, entire thing. So yeah, that, cool. that was very nice this year. <laughs> that is really yeah. nice. Huh. Yeah. So, on the other side of that, what is your biggest rethinking failure? The biggest rethinking failure? Um, I mean, I would say that what um, was most difficult, I would say, about rethinking economics this year was that um, I think I tend to be very enthusiastic about things at the beginning. <laughs> and, um, and with everything here, at the beginning we had um, some issues about that, that I, that I was very kind of enthusiastic about projects and com communicated a lot of enthusiasm and that people felt like, okay, 
she really wants to work a lot of this and put a lot of effort into it. And obviously I had my master's, so I had a lot of other work to do. Um, and I think that was something I also learned this year. That, and, and that was a bit difficult to, to figure that out and, to, and within the team to, um, to yeah, basically um, agree on, on, on which projects to do and which projects not to do. And also once we had the funding, obviously we had a kind of responsibility because we had said that we would do something. And um, yeah, and I think that was a, uh, we had some, some conversation, maybe conversations which weren't that easy at the beginning to, to figure all that kind of things out. Um, I don't know whether, I mean, I, maybe it's not a real failure, but it was a, a kind of a challenge to, to get through that. And, um, but I think then obviously situations change and with Corona now everything changed again and, and and now I'm, I have a lot more time, for example, for this video project that I thought at some point in maybe January or so. Um, so everything turned around again. But at one point, I, I had the fear to, to kind of fail there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess it turned out really well then, after yeah, all. I mean, yeah. It's I mean, it sounds it. really cool. I'm super excited for one yeah. to see it. Yeah, I just, exactly. I, I hope that, that it it will work work out in the way we hope right now <laughs> okay so let's do something a little different let's do a little lightning round so just answer the first thing that comes to your mind mm -hmm. so what is a skill any economist should learn writing that's very fast <laughs> why i thought i had to answer fast <laughs> you did but it was so fast i was impressed <laughs> Um, why? Because economics is a lot about like about the society we want to build and if you argue for a certain type of society and if you try to um, to come up with ideas for that kind of society I think writing is just a very important skill and also it's something it's something which we don't get taught at university that much. And I think it's something economists also have to do all the time because obviously you have to justify what you do. You have to justify your regressions. You have to justify your models. And that's, I would say, one of the most important parts of it. So, yeah. okay. so who do you admire or look up to in economics? Recently, Matsukato very much. She, um, she wrote a book um, which is called The Entrepreneurial State some time back. I didn't read that book, but the idea is that um, basically she says that um, economists maybe have a false image of the state, like that the state is kind of portrayed in a very bad light and um, that she says a lot of innovation and a lot of um, positive drive within the economy actually comes from the state and that we should... Um, should appreciate that more and also include that more into our economic theories and that a lot of more emphasis and policy making should be put on that. Um, and currently I'm actually reading her, I don't know whether it's her second book, but it's a book that came out, I think last year, or I don't know, the year before, which is on, on, on the question of value. So she asks, um, where does value come from um, in an economy and and she basically makes the claim that we're not able to differentiate between um, between creating value and extracting value, which is obviously the exact opposite. And she says a lot of extracting value is measured and seen as creating value. And she tries to um, to come up with a new theory or a new idea of how value is, is created. And I think she's just, I mean, she has super interesting thoughts. She does a lot of new stuff. She does a lot of very relevant stuff and she knows how to communicate it. So that's really something, yeah, I feel like I would want to, <laughs> to be able to do all those things. <laughs> yeah. cool. So what is a quote or statistic that has always stuck with you? Oh, a quote. A quote, like a quote within economics? Or, uh, yeah, okay. Um, I don't know, like, honestly, the first thing that comes to my mind when you ask this is like this, just this bird definition of economics as allocation of scarce resources, which is, <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know, this is the first thing that comes to my mind because we're well, talking in the context of economics right now. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's not a definition I like very much. I don't think that economics is, 
is mainly about distribution of scarce resources and, and this and I think this entire concept of scarcity is useful in some areas but also very harmful in others so um, apparently that's something that's stuck <laughs> yeah. so, but then what should economics be about yes um, I mean I would say that for me economics is about how we can provide um, provide things people need to fulfill their material needs. So I think it is about material needs and it is about the kind of basis of, of other things, but it's, um, but those, those resources which are necessary such that everyone can fulfill their material needs, they're not necessarily scarce. I mean, they're also common goods where it's more about um, the question how we deal with them and not about how we divide them in a way that um, everyone gets a fixed portion assigned or something like that. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. Okay. What is the question you want me to ask that I haven't asked you yet? Oh, what is the question? Um, maybe how teaching and economics should be changed. Oh, I'm, a bit scared. I'm a bit scared like telling you that because I don't really know whether I have a good answer, but that's, I think, an important question. <laughs> so what would be your answer? How would, what would be my answer? Yes. Or how should mm -hmm. it be changed? According yeah. to you. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think there's a lot of things that can be done. There are maybe more obvious and less obvious things. I mean, from every, everything I'm, or, I've already said, I think a more obvious thing is that I think it should be more pluralistic, it should include more theories um, and more, more different methods. That's one thing. Um, I think we should talk about economic issues in a kind of more caring way. I think that's something that's always bothered me even more than the fact that it's only certain theories which are being taught while saying that that's just economics. Um, but it really bothers me that sometimes in teaching, it doesn't really seem like, um, sometimes in the way economists talk, I feel like um, it doesn't seem like, it doesn't seem like, like, like the idea is to really use economics to solve problems and figure out what are the really important problems, what is what people are suffering from right now and how can we fix that? Sometimes I feel it's more like talking bad about, about decisions which are taking within policy making and ideas which come from other social sciences and this idea of, and a bit like the cynic view of, you know, growth is the only thing that's fixed it so far. So it's naive to, to believe in anything else. And I think I would really want just, yeah, just the way of talking about it too to be more, maybe also more careful sometimes that economics is not a discipline that has all the answers. <laughs> um, and then I would like it to be more practical. I think, for example, now in my master, we had a course where we just build a macro model like on our own. So we tried to model um, how, it, it was fun. It was during Corona and we had to build a macro model and and kind of give some predictions of how Corona is going to influence certain other variables. And we had like different scenarios, um, which we did. And when I did that, like I really learned a lot and I felt like I would have liked to do that like in my first year, because I felt like it was difficult, but you could do it in a, in a bit of a simpler way and it was not impossible to do. I think I, you know, we would have been able to do that like a very long time ago and um, maybe with a bit more help. And I think that's really where you learn when you, when you do what economists actually do and don't just sit there and and get theoretical input and learn stuff by heart. So I think it would be super nice to have a lot more projects and um, yeah, start modeling earlier, start doing regressions earlier and all like the econometric methods, um, start writing earlier, all of that. Yeah. Okay. So what is a topic you would really like to see in your education, in your schedule, like in a bachelor? Yeah. yeah. Um, topic. Topic, you said, right? Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I think there, there I'm coming back to the climate life. Like, I think when you really look at how big the problem is, it's, it's I mean, it's unbelievable that it's not, like, it, it, that in many curricula, it's just not there. Maybe, I met, many bachelor students have one course. I think that's not enough. And then there are even people who don't address it at all. I mean, I did philosophy economics, philosophy and economics, so it's not only economics. So I, there are certain topics I just didn't, didn't have during my bachelor. But still, I don't know. I, I was quite disappointed that this kind of topics don't come up. And I think it should just be there like, for everyone. <laughs> yeah. So how does philosophy and economics work together? Did that match well? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think there are a lot of um, topics in economics which, which where, where philosophy come in, comes in. I mean, obviously, um, it's on the one hand like the entire philosophy of science part thinking about economics on a more abstract level and learning what is a model actually i mean i think you can study economics for three years without ever talking about what a model is and and that's where philosophy can, i think is very helpful to talk about all these concepts from philosophy of science and get a better understanding of how economics works so that's what we did a lot um and then obviously you have the ethical perspective like what is what is right, what is wrong, what is justice, how should distribution work, like all those normative questions, which are always like there in economics, but nobody says that it's normative questions. <laughs> and, um, and we did a lot of philosophy, like philosophy of um, like political philosophy, where, where it's a lot about institutions and how, how democracy is organized. And again, I think that's topics which are just super important when you talk about the economy. So I think there's really a lot of, a lot of overlap and yeah, I'm quite glad that I found that program. <laughs> that is really cool. So where do you see economics going? As oh, a profession, yeah. as an educational uh, program? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I mean, obviously I have my ideal of it. So what, I mean, I think what would be great if kind of economists would just yeah how can I say that like come together and really just start to really try to come up with new ideas which lead like allow a transformation of society into a direction which is which is positive which is which is sustainable um, so I think I think that economic could be so, so useful. Like so many, there's so many like really, really useful tools. There are so many like really smart people. There's so much, like so, so much attention also being paid to what economists say. And I think that if all economists together try to really, really have a positive impact um, and, and really also be creative. I mean, I think that's what, what I mean by having ideas, like really just come up with, with new, yeah, with new ideas then I think a lot could be done with economics and, 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 and in teaching, it's, it's what I said before, if, if education was transformed in, in such ways, I think that could just add to, to coming up with creative ideas. And I mean, I don't know, I'm not saying over, over and over again that we need a carbon price. I mean, everyone knows that by now. And it, apparently it's not, not that easy to, to put it, to like bring it about politically, but also come up with other ideas and say, you know, okay, maybe if the carbon price is not working out, maybe, yeah, we can come up with something else as well. I mean, I don't want to say the carbon price is a stupid idea. I think it's, it's super necessary, but <laughs> maybe it's not the only solution there is. Okay. So are you going to stay with Rethinking Rotterdam after this year? Yeah. What are your yeah. plans for Rethinking? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm going back to Berlin um, now, so I'm probably not going to go on with rethinking Rotterdam. I just hope that, um, yeah, that that the work here goes on, and I think it will. Um, and I would like to go on with the topics which are talked about in rethinking economics. But so far, because I mean, I'm study, I'm, I'm finishing my studies now, and I'm probably going to start working at some point. So I still don't really know um, how I'm going to include rethinking economics into that new life, but I hope that there is going to be a way. <laughs> yeah. So, and then finally, what is your advice for future economists? Mm -hmm. Advice. 
Um, I would say the most important thing is really to be open and or, or to me, I would, yeah, I would say the most important thing is to be open to, to all different strands within economics and to, to different ideas and people. So I think that um, people who are maybe more drawn to, let's say, the more usual way of doing economics, I think they should really look into other fields because, or other areas of economics, because I think you can just draw a lot of inspiration from there. But also I think that people who are more, maybe more drawn to heterodox issues or, or are dealing with economic issues um, within other science, like social sciences, I think it also does make sense to look at what's very, like to have a, a very close look to what's influential right now because it's influential and because there are useful approaches um, within it. So I think sometimes there's, there tend to be those camps where everyone thinks they're right. And I think it's just super nice to, yeah, to leave that behind a little bit, maybe. <laughs> wow. That's a great answer. Well, thank you so much for joining yeah, me. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so much fun to have you on. And uh, I can't wait to see the videos for the project. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm also looking forward to see how they look like once everything is ready. Bye.